This podcast brought to you by Podcast Center LA. Action, focus, discipline. This is the Zero Excuses Podcast. Each and every week, we talk to high-performing, inspirational athletes, entrepreneurs, and leaders. We ask powerful questions to extract their tools, strategies, and life lessons for you to to crush crush your excuses, excuses, to break out of your comfort zone, and accomplish your ambitious dreams and goals. Here's your host, Kenyon Zitzka. Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. I am really excited that you're joining us today, and I'm really excited to be bringing you today's guest, Olani Shobo Mahin, or Ni Shobo for short. Ni is a former All-American and NFL fullback for the New Orleans Saints, and and he is here to talk to us today about developing a dominant mindset, a mindset that you need to get what you want out of life. And he's going to take us through his journey after spending a few short years in the NFL and then having to pick up the pieces after having his career cut short through injury and some other circumstances that he found himself in and also supporting his family and, and trying to find his way in life. But before we jump into the conversation with me, just want to remind you guys of a couple quick things that we have going on here is that I have embarked on a year long challenge to complete 100,000 burpees and raise $25,000 towards the Kirsch Foundation's goal of $250,000 to support programs designed to help veterans suffering from PTSD. You can simply click the link that I've provided in the show notes to pledge your support towards my personal efforts, or you can also go to burpeesforvets.com to form your own team or your own personal fundraising effort to support this endeavor. All right. So without any further ado, let's hop into the conversation with me. You know, one of the most pressing questions that I get is Kenyon. What's the one thing that I need to have in order to get back control over my time, build wealth and forge deep and lasting connections with my family? Simple. Discipline. Might sound simple, but it's far from easy. That's why I found it absolutely critical to have a mentor, a coach, Someone there who can show you the habits, the routines, and the mindset strategies required to build supreme amounts of discipline in your life. If you're interested in having me as your discipline coach, head on over to kenyanzitska.com forward slash discipline to sign up for a free 60-minute consulting session. I'll go over some of the ways that I've used discipline to make breakthroughs in every area of my life. We'll also talk about how you could secure me as your discipline coach. But this isn't for everyone. You must be willing to invest the time and the resources necessary to get you the results that you want. I look forward to talking with you soon. Neat. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule to join us today on the Zero Excuses podcast. I know this has been a, a bit of a work in progress to, to get our schedules lined up here. So I'm, I'm excited to finally get, get you on here and pick your brain. Absolutely, man. I'm excited to be on. I'm honored and I'm looking forward to it, man. Alrighty, right on. So why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us about yourself. I know you've uh, you've had quite a career in playing football at the collegiate and NFL level. You've been a firefighter. So why don't you take it from there and tell us more about yourself? Definitely, man. So I am a one of four boys growing up. I was the third out of four. And my dad was from Nigeria or is from Nigeria. And he came here when he was 18. And um, he is someone who very much valued discipline, valued education. But we were a soccer family. And I found out very quickly that I didn't really like soccer. Well, actually, not very quickly. It was about sixth grade where um, <laughs> I realized how much running was involved. As you start to go up in the, I was starting to play classic soccer and more competitive. And I just decided I didn't want to do that, man. So I started playing football when I was in seventh grade and I fell in love with it. And I was very lucky in that sense. We'll talk about this later, but I'm homeschooling my children. And I was actually just telling them today, me and my wife are and the number one outcome for or the reason why I chose to do that is because I want them to find out what they're called to do as early as possible. Mm. So for me, when I was in seventh grade, it wasn't like I felt like I found my calling in life necessarily, but I just loved it. And and that's the key is when you find something you just enjoy. So of course, when you enjoy something, you go all in. I practiced hard. I loved it. And I just got better and better. I was never the biggest, the fastest, the strongest. I had, I was pretty decent athlete, 
but I got the chance to walk on at Oregon State. And if you guys don't know what a walk on is, it's kind of like an unpaid intern. You don't really get paid, <laughs> no scholarship, but they, they juice you for all of the work. And so I wanted a scholarship. I had my first son when I was in college and I found out really quickly they weren't going to give me the scholarship. I wanted to transfer to Portland State, had a breakout season my senior year and got the chance to get picked up by the New Orleans Saints in 2008, which was a dream of mine. I love football so much. I wanted to play in the NFL and I made this dream happen. But like a lot of people in the NFL, the career, my career did not last a long time. It lasted two years, actually. And I got released in the middle of the year that the Saints won the Super Bowl. So just imagine how I was feeling back with my friends watching them, you know, hoist up that trophy. It was tough, man. But after that, I spent a good couple of years, man, just frustrated, wandering, not really sure what I wanted to do next, which is a place that a lot of men find themselves, especially when there's so many different things you could be doing, especially when there's so many pressures from society, from social media, from your wives, from your family, from your church, telling you what you should be doing, what you could be doing, what you ought to be doing, what you should have done. And it's frustrating, especially when you have children, you have a family to feed. At this point, I had four children with my wife and we were just newly married. But basically what um, I started coaching with athletes at a local high school and I realized with these athletes, they didn't have what they really needed to be successful. They had all the talent. They, these guys were talented, but they lacked a mindset and they lacked a general framework or strategy by which to get to the NFL, which represents this big goal that they wanted to achieve. And I, of course, knew how to do that because that was something that I did. And I knew a lot of pitfalls that they needed to avoid. So I took these guys up under my, under my wing and started teaching them and coaching them on how to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is how my company started to evolve. Now, simultaneously, I also became a firefighter. So I decided I want to become a firefighter. And the reason I did that was for the security. I wanted a good job that would pay me good benefits and those type of things, a job that seemed like it was a well-respected job that sounded like a cool thing to do, right? right. So I, uh, I made up my mind out to do it, and I did it. And so I was working these two things at the same time. I had my family. I had this, this job in firefighting that requires a lot of training and, of course, some energy and effort to put into. And I also had my business, which was evolving from more personal training and, and those type of things to a focus on mindset. And about a year and a half ago, I decided to quit my job as a firefighter and dive into my business full time. So what I do now is I work with high performers and that entails elite athletes, entrepreneurs, business leaders, CEOs, executives, et cetera. I teach them the mindset and the habits that they need to systematically dominate under pressure. So when, when, you, when you really need to come through and, and with the focus, a heavy emphasis on mindset, because what I find is that the mindset is responsible for Shit, you've heard it, you know, 80%, the 80-20 rule, 80%, man, you know, Tony Robbins always talks about 80%, 80% is psychology, 20% is mechanics, and I believe that wholeheartedly. So that's what I do now. I love what I do. I work with a lot of really, really cool people, teaching, get really digging deep, man, and showing them how to really set up practically a mindset that is designed to help them get what they actually want, as opposed to consistently struggle and be frustrated all the time, even though they're listening to all the podcasts and reading all the books. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, thanks for all that. I, there's so many different things that we can dive into, but where I want to start off with here is let's take a step back to uh, where your career in the NFL was winding down and you had to kind of find your feet again. What specifically was going through your mind at that point in time? Can you unpack that for us a little bit and uh, give us some more detail on what was going through your mind at that point in time? Absolutely, man. So there was a part of me that was in survival mode because I had in the year after NFL, I had a good amount of money saved up, but it went really, really fast. And I, I had zero idea about how to save, invest. I mean, I had a pretty good idea of how to save. I didn't blow all my money while I was in the NFL, but I surely didn't know how to invest. And I surely didn't have any game plan financially, right? So as my money began to dwindle, as a result of going all into training and not really working a ton in terms of like earning money, I saw my, my, my finances begin to dwindle. And that, of course, triggered some <laughs> fight or flight response, if you will. You know, and so a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of overwhelm, trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. And I remember going online and like looking at places to apply for jobs and filling out resumes and shit like that. And it was just like, this sucks, man. Like I was really, really unsure. Uncertainty was the word of the day for me. A lot of days. It's just not sure what I wanted to do, 
not sure how I was going to make money to earn for my family, not sure what the next five, 10 years of my life was going to look like. I'm not sure of a lot. So it was really, really frustrating. But ultimately, and, and we hear this said a lot, you know, failures are good, right? Like it's, you, you need these times to learn. And it really is true, but it's so hard to, to feel that or know that while you're going through it, <laughs> especially when you have no real strategy for how to get out of it. It's really, really frustrating. So for me, I would call it a really dark time. Quite frankly, I was working at a job that I hated at a factory job. Just really, really frustrated, man. Just unsure, not knowing what to do. But I am very, very grateful for that time now. And I oftentimes, I feel like those times are important. They're necessary and you should be thankful for them. However, you don't want to have to go through them if you don't have to. So what I find myself doing now is projecting out into the future and anticipating certain things that could or will happen, right? Where that could lead to these times of uncertainty. Because I'm a man who values certainty, like we all do. Like, I want to know what's going on. We want to have a plan. And although, you know, um, I think it was Gote who said certainty is, is the need for certainty is a disease, right? And, and I believe that. But we all do need certainty to a certain degree. But the, it, the question becomes, how do we get our certainty? So part of what I do, man, is, is just projecting out ahead and making sure I'm as prepared as I can. And that, of course, frees me up to do what it is that I love to do most right now, which is just help people build a more dominant mindset, man, and just build that confidence they need to succeed. Hey, guys, just want to take a quick second here out of the show to give a shout out to our partners over at Podcast Center LA. They have been with me from the beginning of the Zero Excuses podcast here, and I wouldn't be where I'm at without their help. Steve and the rest of the team there have been really forthcoming with advice and suggestions and improvements for me to make to get the podcast to where it's at today. And they've been gracious enough to extend to you, my listeners, a very, very special offer. If you use the promotional code ZERO, and that's spelled Z-E-R-O, you'll get 20% off your first gig. If you've ever been thinking of starting your own podcast or if you've been going at it alone for a long time and you just need a little bit of help to take your game to the next level, you definitely should check out Podcast Center LA. So what specifically were you like, did you start to dive into to start to pull yourself out of that dark time, as you call it? Yes, that's a great question, man. So the first thing is awareness. So that is, it's really easy when you're in a dark time like that to find things, vices, vehicles to block you from the pain. So what are some obvious ones? Drugs, pornography, sex, food, television, even sports, even exercise to a certain degree. Some people just, you know, go to the gym right for hours. So there's a lot of escapes. Religion is one for a lot of people as well. Anything to escape the reality. But one of the best things that I did that I'm very glad that I did is I didn't, I didn't get too deep into a lot of those. And when I did, there was a few vices that were out. There was a period of time where I was drinking and, and doing sorts of just doing different shit that wasn't really in alignment with who I really am, quite frankly. But I never really indulged too heavily in those. But I did feel I allowed myself to feel the pain while I was while I was in that. So the pain is good because then it spurs you to do something about it. Right. And so for me, a key was getting started as little as I can where I was, right? So even though I didn't have certainty about what was going to happen, I started mentoring those athletes, right? So I didn't know what it was going to turn into. I wasn't sure, but I just went with my instinct. And that was super, super critical because following that instinct alone is what has evolved and led me to do what I'm doing now. Yeah. And if I would have never acted on that instinct, I, would have, I don't know what would have happened. I might have been still frustrated today. So that was, that was the first key is really just following my instinct of what I felt like needed to be done, what I felt like uh, was a way for me to add value and what I felt like I was passionate about doing. And I started doing that. And, and by doing that, again, that evolved into personal training. So I went from training these athletes in the gym just for free, just taking them up under my wing to now people requesting that I train them, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that. And one of the clients that I got was a track runner at that school that I was coaching football, right? Mm -hmm. And his dad is a counselor and actually took a liking to me. And I remember he called me in his office and he started just asking me a bunch of questions. His name was Ray, man. One of, a guy I'm eternally grateful for, one of my mentors. And he just began mentoring me. I mean, he took me up under his wing and he started showing me different books to read. I remember he had me read uh, The Law of Attraction by Esther and Jerry Hicks. 
he was having to be doing all these different sort of meditations and introducing me to these concepts that were kind of foreign to me, quite frankly. I mean, not foreign in the sense that I had heard it, but it never really, it didn't really, I hadn't stuck with me, right? right? But this guy really started getting me reading, started getting me hyper aware. So that was another key is I had this mentor who was now showing me these different things. And then of course, from there, through that guidance, through that clarity that I was getting, I started to gain even more clarity about what I wanted, which is the key. The key is whenever you feel pain, you have to use that as a signal to focus on what you want. And it's really, really practical. But it's like, if you're hungry, right, and you feel pain, what you should do and what we do do is not just sit around talking about how hungry we are. We say, I want to eat. So now the goal becomes, I want to eat. The goal is not to talk about how hungry we are. We then create a goal to eat, and then we go create something to eat, and then we eat right? We execute. And then we find, we find a certain level of confidence in having a plan to work because we know where we're going. Yeah. So that's the way to use pain. And I, I got better at that. And he, my mentor showed me how to do that. And now if ever I'm, I'm looking for pain every day, <laughs> like most people are running for pain. I'm looking for it. I've got my journal. I got certain questions I ask myself. I'm looking for problems. I'm looking for obstacles. I'm looking for things that are going to be in my way because I know that like Marcus Aurelius said, and Ryan Holiday has a book called this, The Obstacle is the Way. Like that is the shit you need to be going towards, not running from. So uh, there's a lot there that I know I just laid out, but those were the really keys for me in pulling me out of that dark time. Of course, it really helped that I had a very supportive wife, you know what I mean, who didn't discourage me from doing what I needed to do. Instead, pushed me to do what I needed to do. That's a gift that I try not to take for granted. You know what I mean? That, that is, um, and, and I, I have to remind myself of that a lot of how awesome that is to have a woman who actually like number one believes in me. Number two believes that I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Right. And then number three, someone who urges me to go do it. Like it doesn't, doesn't try to soften me up, if you will, like actually pushes me. So those were all things that were critical in helping me get out of that dark time. Yeah. I want to key in on something you, you mentioned about pain. I think a lot of people have this misconception about life that it's supposed to be easy. We're entitled to shit. We're, you know, that, that life should be easy and pain free. And what you just said is, is you go after pain. So how can people listening to this right now start to make that, that mindset shift? Ah, uh, yes. That's a, it's a, it's a very important one and it's a difficult one, meaning it will be difficult. So I will not tell you that it will be easy. One of my favorite books, to me in the top five, my top five most important books that I've read, Principles by Ray Dalio. Yep. But he talks about his number one habit is using pain as a trigger to reflect, right? And so the question that you asked is, how do you do that? All right, so I think the first thing is deciding, getting clear on the fact that you need to do this. So that's before, like, it's like, if you're gonna run a marathon or some shit like that, like, you had better be clear about why you're doing it and why you need to do this before you start. Because if you just try to run a marathon, you're going to give up about a mile in, right? Depending on how good, how, how in shape you are. So that first thing is clear. And so I would think back at all the times in your life when you experience pain, right? And think about what could have happened or what might have happened had you used that signal differently. So we all have times in our life where we experience pain and we were just banging our heads up against the wall over and over and over, over and over and over, and just gave ourselves so much more pain than we needed to feel, all because we didn't use the pain as a signal of to evaluate, reflect, and find out what to do next. So in order to sell myself on the need to get good at handling pain, I would go back and look at all those times and ask yourself, what would have happened if I had gotten good at that shit? What's going to happen if, like, how, how's my life going to change if I actually now use these signals and I pivot quickly as opposed to, like, right. being frustrated and staying, like, two, three weeks when you could just use it in a day. Like, you could feel pain. Like, a lot of people don't step on a scale. You could just use that pain just, like, okay, use that pain, soak in it for, like, a day, and then move on, whereas most people don't. They avoid that shit for hella long and just never do anything about it. So that's the first thing is get myself sold on it, which is where a lot of people fail. Same with diets, man. They, they start a diet, but they never sell themselves on the need to do it first, right? Right. Secondly, what I would do, and this is almost like a hack or like just how to speed up this process, really, is get yourself a person. Now, this person could be a friend. It could be a wife. It could be a coworker. It could be a coach. 
It could be a, it doesn't matter what, a pastor, a whatever. Get someone who cares about you enough to tell you the truth. Because guess what? You know, they've already, they've always said it. The truth hurts. The truth hurts. Many times, if we just have someone that can tell us the truth, we don't realize what a gift that is. Oh, That's yeah. a gift. Now, the reality is that it's going to hurt you when they tell you, especially if there's someone who's really close to you, like your wife, your wife or your husband, depending on who's listening, you're most vulnerable to your wife because you're, you, she's the person you most want to make happy more than anyone. And when you hear from her that you're not living up to a certain expectation or you, she sees a certain weakness in you, that's going to hurt. And you're immediately, your fight or flight response is going to go up. Your amygdala is going to kick in. Your, your heart's going to start beating. Your hands are going to start sweating. But guess what? That's all right. That's perfectly normal, and that happens for everyone. What you can do, though, is train yourself to use it as a time to reflect, like Ray Dalio, right? So he said yeah. when he does feel that pain, when someone's telling him something, it's, he uses that a time to reflect. So one of the, the best ways to work through this and sort of train yourself in order to deal with pain better is to breathe, to learn how to breathe properly. Right. I know you've had Mark yeah. Devine on this show oh, yeah. talk about diaphragmic breathing. If you can just learn how to belly breathe, you know, baby breathe, however you want to call it, diaphragmic breathing. All it is. Inhale. Stomach expands as you inhale. And the reason why this works so well is because remember, I said there's an almond shaped piece in your brain called the amygdala that when you feel threatened, it secretes hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, yeah. and it makes you stressed out and you make bad decisions when you're stressed out. So when you learn how to breathe, it actually halts that. It stops that process. So if you learn how to do that consistently, what you will learn is you will stop that fight or flight response. That's one of the main reasons why you should meditate. Like any, and especially any milita military, firefighter, I mean, everyone really, but especially in those type of fields because you are naturally having your, core, your, your amygdala secrete hormones all throughout the day. Oh, yeah. You want to get good at silencing that fight or flight and living in a more calm state where you can think with your prefrontal cortex, which is the rational, reasonable part of your brain, where you could actually make decisions. Because if we're honest, if we look at the truth that people are telling us, we know that it benefits us. We deep down know it, that it's true, and that's why we're running from it. So if we can get good at calming that down, listening to that, and then using that, like using what they said, using the reality. Now, I'm, the person hopefully is a person. Now, the, the, you should exercise some discretion in who you choose to use this with. Someone who actually knows you well and can tell you the real truth. But you, the goal should be for you to get really good at this as well. And of course, then to surround yourself with other people who are smart, who are qualified, who can tell you the truth, which is then, of course, why it's important that you hire coaches, that you have people that can help you, who have good insight, that can see things at a level that you can't, right? But that is what I would say. That's the easiest way. And then, of course, there's some other habits that you can build as well, like just, just a simple habit of journaling, right? Journaling. One question that you can, and there's a ton of different type of questions that you can ask yourself. I happen to be a fan of more guided journaling where you, you have prompts, questions, yeah. and then you answer them, right? Some people like the free flow thing. I don't really do as well with that. I like guided. So I have a, I have a system that I use called the blueprint and certain questions that I ask myself. But one of the questions that I ask myself every night is what are the emotions that came up today? The painful emotions that I felt because emotions are like a signal. It's like your thermostat or it's like those gas lights on the front of your car, right? The, all, all those lights. So when a light pops up, that's like an emotion. So, and that, that light is telling you something. So frustration is a signal. Right. Disappointment is a signal. Anger is a signal. A lot of men feel anger. A lot of men feel angry when they lack control, when mm -hmm. they feel like they don't have control. That's a yeah. signal, right? So if you use that, you can figure, well, what do I not have control of? What is my idea of control, really? Why is it that I feel like I have no control? Do I have control over more than I'm giving myself credit for? Am I trying to control something that I have no business trying to control, right? right? Am I working against the laws of nature? Mm -hmm. And so if you, can, if you can start using all those signals, and like I said, man, I'm not, I don't want to come off as a guy who's, who's got a bunch of hacks and shit like that. It's, it's tough work. It really is hard work. But it's, so, it's the type of work that yields the results, what it produces is the shit that you see in people that you want. It's like, oh, how that guy's able to make, because decisions are what lead to getting more money. Right. Building. So if you can make good decisions, 
you will be highly successful in whatever you do. That's the key. If you just, if you make, if you can become a master at making good decisions, you can get whatever you want. Now, what prevents us from making good decisions is not thinking properly, man, and not yeah. paying attention to those signals. So if we get good at that, that is worth getting good at. And it takes effort. But like I said, it's very, very worth it. And again, you can actually train yourself to where you like pain. You, you, you go towards pain. You enjoy it. Not in the sense of like it feels good, but you like it because of what it does for you. It's like yeah. that feeling of that, that burn that you feel when you're, when you're lifting weights. It, it doesn't feel good, but you like it. You yeah, like you know, it because you, you know, know what where, it's doing. Yeah, you know where it's taking you. Exactly, exactly. So it sounds like, you know, you just dropped a whole bunch of knowledge bombs there. But if I can put a bow on this, it sounds like if we can just simply take a step back and observe our thoughts a lot more and be conscious of, of what our thoughts are doing to us and what our thoughts are driving us towards, that's going to be such a key shift in our, in our habits and, and, and how we go about life that that's going to, that simple shift right there is kind of the key to getting us what we want out of life, right? Absolutely. Being still, man. One of my favorite quotes, Blaise Pascal, he said, all of man's troubles come from not knowing how to be alone and sit still alone in a room. <laughs> like we got to learn how to sit still, man. Like we yeah. have to turn the phone off. Go try going on a walk in the morning without your phone. No music. Just walk. Just think. Think through your problems. Sit down in a chair and think about your problems. Think about the shit that is in your way. Not in an emotional way, like, oh, my God, my life is so... No, just, just think objectively, as objective as you can, mm -hmm. about the things that are causing you pain. Why is it? Why am I not experiencing the joy or love that I thought that I would in my relationship? Hmm, why? What is my wife always complaining about? What is she saying? Is that true? Okay, maybe some of it's not true, but why would she say it if it's not true? What could she possibly be feeling? What does she need that I'm not really giving to her? Mm -hmm. Why am I not giving it to her? Why am I unable to give it to her? What skills do I lack? What resources do I not have? Emotionally, what do I lack that I'm, I'm not able to provide for my wife in the way that she really wants? Just sit still and think, have some, gain some awareness. And it, it's not a sexy quality, right? Like, man, we want to be aggressive and action takers. And taking action, of course, is, is very important. Mm -hmm. But even if you're, if you're not taking action, <laughs> There's a reason and you need to think about why. And some of you are taking the wrong types of action. And some of you, your ratio is off. You're taking too much action, not enough thinking. Some of you probably, most of you are not thinking enough. Not, not at least in the way that we're talking about. Some of you worry a lot. You're yeah. worrying a lot, right? Oh, yeah. And of course, we know what worry is. I can't remember uh, where I've heard that soul suicide. Uh, and I feel like that's accurate. Worry is soul suicide. You're literally killing yourself every time you're worrying about shit. Now, that doesn't mean you can't think about things that can potentially happen. But when you add extras on it and add a different meaning onto what could potentially happen, then that produces fear. And of course, we know fear immobilizes us. We're not going to move as fast. And when we're scared, we're in fight or flight. So we're either protecting or we're overly aggressive. And, and just it's all these all sorts of problems. So you're exactly right. If you can learn to be self-aware, to learn and understand yourself on a deep level, that is the first key to change is awareness. You have to be aware. And awareness is a big idea. It's a lot of things. There's a lot of things you need to be aware of, and it's a lot of work. So you should be working to be more self-aware. Yeah. Napoleon Hill's book, Outwitting the Devil, this, this sounds like we have to get out of this drifting habit that a lot of us that a lot of us tend to fall into. And I do want to kind of jump over to something that you just said. It sounds like you're, you have a very good grasp on keeping your business, your family, and the things that you need to work on yourself kind of in, in balance. Like, how do you do that? What are your key habits and systems that, that you use to make sure that you don't go all in on your business and, and ignore your family, for example? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's a couple of things or uh, it's a lot of things, but I'll keep it simple because, again, I don't want to overload you with a bunch of tactics and because that shit is not really that. Remember, it's the tw that's the 20 percent, the 80 yeah. percent to me. And that is number one. I know who I am. So that's first. I know who I am. And what I mean by that is I know what my purpose here is on this earth. So time management and, you know, how to schedule your day and shit, that's a secondary question after you figure out what the hell you're here for. Like, what are you, right. what are you doing? So if I'm cooking a meal and I tell people, if, I, if, I have a, if I'm a chef and I got my sous chef and a bunch of, you know, extra help 
and I tell them, just start cutting these vegetables, you know, cut up this. They're, they're going to be like, what are we making? Like, who is this for? How many people is it for? What are we cooking here? I got to know that shit first. So that's first thing is I have clarity on who I am, what I'm here on this earth for, right? The second part is I know all the different areas of my life that matter to me, right? Like, so if you go to a great company, let's take like Coca-Cola, for example, or Mm -hmm. Apple, if you walk into the Apple enterprise and you ask them, you know, where can I find, you know, the people who do the advertisements on, you know, the ones you watch before the movies. I just went to the movies last night with my daughter. We saw Paddington too. It was good. (laughs) And then they got the, you know, the Coca-Cola commercials. Where can I find the people who made those? They say, oh, yeah, go to the marketing department or the advertising department, or they have their company broken up into categories. It's not just a big ass building filled with people all working for Coca-Cola. It's organization, right? Okay. You're in the military. You understand that there has to be structure. You you see what I'm saying? There has to be order and structure and, and, and some sort of way of organizing. So I know all the different areas of my life that matter to me, right? In each area of my life, I don't look at it as separate, right? So I'll use a football analogy. The offensive line, they meet together. Like we we have meetings as running backs. We would have meetings with just the running backs. But we don't just – we're not a team of running backs working for ourselves. (laughs) Like that's a sign of a bad team if you have running backs fighting with wide receivers. We're all on the same team here. Now, the reality is that each group contributes to the whole. You see what I'm saying? So each group is important. So even though the wide receivers aren't catching the ball this play, their blocking frees up and helps out, you know, the linemen. And that impacts the quarterback. That impacts special teams. That is not even on the field. That impacts defense. All of this shit works together. So I have this my life broken up into categories, but I don't look at them as separate. So I don't look at work as separate from my family. It's like, I don't look at my arm as separate from my leg. Like, (laughs) obviously, my arm is my arm, my leg, but I need them both. Actually, when you run, you need to be balanced, right? So your arms work in conjunction with your legs. And when some shit is off with your leg, you feel that shit everywhere, right? Anyone who's ever played sports, you might have had some, you know, calf injury and you go to a good doctor, a good therapist, they'll say, oh, it's tightening in in your hips, Right. And you're like, what? How can that happen? Or your bicep. It's because of some imbalance in your hamstring or some shit like that. So everything is works together as a whole. So that's a mindset thing that I that's how I view my life. I have categories, but everything works together. Now, secondly, or thirdly, I can't remember where I was at. I have a clear idea. I'm talking about laser clear. I have a fat ass binder thick like this big full of every single category of my life. I know exactly what I want that to look like. So I have a clear picture of perfection in that category. I have a mindset or a G-code philosophy around that category. And I also have a very clear game plan broken down all the way to the time blocks, time spent in all of these categories, right? So we, I, I started gr- big, big up here. Then we get more granular down to the, the nitty gritty about the shit I have to do every day. So the reason why I'm able to homeschool, wake up at 445, work out with my son, meditate, read, blueprint, then spend time learning, reading, all that shit, spend like an hour reading, then meet with my team, then homeschool my children, then work for a good six hours, then right after that, go to the movies with my daughter, come back, hang out with my wife. The reason why I'm able to do all that and not be overwhelmed is because it's all in context. You see what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, it's like this puzzle that, I've, that I fit together. Now, the reality is a lot of times that puzzle is not fitting. And that shows up in the form of pain, frustration, tired, overwhelmed. And guess what I do when I see that pain? It's a signal. Something's wrong with the it. system. Yeah, yeah I got to tweak it. And then life becomes a, a process of tweaking. And that is fun, man. We're builders, man. We yeah. like building shit. Like, this is, this is fun, man. I'm building. I'm designing the life I want to live. Like, right before this, man, I was outside jumping on a trampoline with my kids. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I just smile because I'm like, this is how I want it. And that's a good feeling, right? But so to put the bow on it, as you call, as you said, the key is knowing who you are, what you're here to do, breaking that life, having a vision for your life, a purpose for your life, breaking that shit up into categories. So you got your wife, you got your kids, you got work, you got business, you got this, you got that. Then creating clear pictures of perfection for each one of those categories, having a code or philosophy 
that it should evolve, right? You guys all have a, a code about nutrition right now, even though you might not have it written out. And some of your guys' philosophy is leading you to be fat and overweight. Some of it, some of you is leading you to be good in shape and energy. Some of you, it's leading you to about C plus energy. You need to modify your philosophy, modify your approach in order to get it to where you want it. And then, of course, you need to have a game plan. You need to have a strategy for how you're going to attack this. And you need to have, and you think about it, and, and to use Ray, Ray Dalio's terms, as a machine. So let's take the machine of health, right? That should be a category for everyone. Your health machine is designed to produce a certain result. So what is the result that you want? How do you want to look? How do you want to feel? What do you want to like be able to do, run, jump, and shit like that? That's the result. Now, everything that you do should be to produce that result. And if it's not, then you tweak it. And that big machine of health has sub-machines, has small systems and processes within that. And if you can know what that machine is designed to produce, you can know all the sub-processes within that. Then you can focus on the sub-processes that, that might be having the biggest effect. Maybe for some of you, it's sleep. Maybe it's nutrition. Maybe it's exercise. But then at least you have clarity. And, it's, and then, it, again, it becomes fun because you actually can tweak around with it. And you can figure out. Like I'm reading um, Dave Asprey's book, Bulletproof Diet. Yeah. And I've always heard about that. I'm reading that shit. I'm like, it's blowing my mind. I'm like, oh, man, like I can't wait to tinker with this machine. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to add, to add some of these things to this, things that I didn't know in this way and that way. And so that is how I'm able to do that. And I'll say I'll challenge everyone listening. If you are living your life and it's not a life that you want to live and you're not doing anything about it, this might be an exaggeration, but I'll call you the worst type of man. The worst type of man, the yeah. one that Napoleon Hill calls the drifter. Yeah. And, and before you, before you go saying, "Oh, I'm not the, I'm not that dude," you be honest with yourself. Yeah. Like, are you at number one? Are you living the life you want? That's the first question. The second question is, if you're not, which most people are not, and that's perfectly okay. You, if you're not, have you designed a plan, and are you working that plan to get and live the life that you want? Are you today in the process of building that shit? If you're not. You're the worst type. You're the worst type. And if you're listening to this and you're the type of person who listens to shit like this and you're still not doing anything, you're the next, you're, you're, you're you are actually, you, you are the worst type. Mm-hmm. The type who listens to the shit and does who reads the books and doesn't even do anything about it. You mm-hmm. are the type. I mean, that's like in the church. That's what uh, Jesus said in the Bible, man. He's like the people who actually go to church and shit and don't do what I say. You're the worst type. Not the ones who don't even know about me yet. You're the worst type. So the challenge to all you listening who actually got a podcast app opening that shit, listening to shit like this, you had better be designing the, the life that you want to live, man, and working towards that shit. So maybe you can't afford to do this, this, and that. You better at least, maybe you can't afford to take your wife on date night once a week. Maybe you can't. Well, you at least better be taking her to McDonald's and getting her a, a, a Sunday, getting her an ice cream cone. You at least better be going on a walk with her in the morning. Don't tell me you don't have enough for this. If you can't travel with your wife, you at least better be taking her to the park. You at least better be taking her to the movies matinee on Sundays. So you you, you want to work at that shit today. Like, don't wait. That's the, that's the other there's thing. Always, there's that's, always something you can do. Absolutely. Always. Yeah. And you want to always be doing that. I was just listening to Napoleon Hill yesterday, and he was talking about Henry Ford. Henry Ford's attitude was this. this is what Napoleon Hill said about Henry Ford. Henry Ford had a can-do attitude. And here's what he meant. If any time he saw a problem, any time there was a problem or a goal that he wanted, he wouldn't focus on what he couldn't do. He would only do what he could do about it. Just even if just something little. Right. And he would gain momentum, momentum, gain momentum. And then sooner than, you, sooner than you know it, he's got more momentum. And then by the time he gets to the bridge, which Napoleon Hill re- said represents the problem, he realized there's no water in the river. So he could just walk right through that shit. But most people are looking at the bridge like, oh, man, how am I going to get across that? And they're just sitting there. Move, move, yes. move. Man, we need to move. Momentum, right? Momentum. Don't overthink. Just do something. Do something. Right out. You're probably thinking, oh, man, like, I wonder, I, I need his exact systems. And, you know, I wonder how I could. No, you don't. Take out a piece of paper and write this shit out. Press rewind on whatever I just said and write it out. And you, you know what I said. Start out with who you are, what you want to do. Break your life into categories. Then in each category, have a vision of perfection. Then after that, have a code, a philosophy. Then have a game plan. You could do that shit. Write it out. You don't need my specific systems. 
You don't need Kenyan's exact strategy on how to do that shit. People who want to lose weight, you know exactly what foods not to eat. Now, that doesn't mean you should stop there. Obviously, you want to keep learning. Like I am like I said, bulletproof. I'm learning, shit, there's some vegetables that's not even good for you. Right. <laughs> I didn't know that shit. Yeah. But guess what? Some of you need to start with just eating fruits and vegetables. <laughs> you know what I mean? It would help you to start there at the very least. And maybe yeah. you can't buy the book. Go to the library. Yeah, t- the first step is taking the first friggin' step. <laughs> right. I mean, most, right. People get, most people get wrapped around the axle and, and never end up taking that first step altogether. 98% of the people who, uh, who never get what they want out of life never end up taking that first step. I mean, if, if, I, never, if I kept hanging out onto the thought that I wasn't a good public speaker, I would have never started this uh, podcast that we're talking about right now. And my first step was just, you know, get behind the microphone, hit record and go. Exactly. Momentum. And that's why your podcast is booming. That's why you're getting all these guests on here. And that's why you're successful. And then people are going to look at you and say, hey, man, like he's got man, he must have had all these. You're like, no, I just moved. I moved. I started where I was at. That's another habit that I would say. If you could just break it, break that habit down, the habit of moving on shit immediately. Make that your habit. So do things right away. Don't wait. I challenge my kids to that all the time. Don't wait. Go do it right now. Do it right now. And when you get in the habit of that, number one, you'll realize how often you don't do that, myself included. I realize like there'll be some things I'm like waiting. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that on Sunday. You know, yeah, I got some free. No, do that shit right now. It don't even take that long. Do it right now. And then you, you feel good about yourself. Because, man, you know, we, we're, we're action takers. We feel good. We get the little dopamine rush when we when we do some shit, check off the to-do list, do some shit, do it, move forward. Yeah, and I forget where I where I said this, but I might have made a Facebook post, but like it always seems crazy until we actually sit down and actually do it. Then we're like, why the hell was I making a big deal out of this? Like, just right. move, take action. You know, we're we're starting to wind down on time here. I wish we had another like six hours to uh, record a marathon podcast here because <laughs> this has been freaking great, man. But there's a couple questions that I want to ask you. What would you tell 23, 24 year old me? Like, if you were to go back in time, what would you tell yourself right now? Like, knowing what you know right now, yeah. what, how how would you uh, approach things differently? Right. I would look at myself in the eye. I would slap myself. I would I would slap myself and say, "Wake up, man. Wake up." Like, wake up. Like, don't sleepwalk. And, uh, you know, I I wasn't at 23, 24. I think I was still in a league at that point. And I wasn't sleepwalking necessarily, but I just lacked awareness about certain things. Mm -hmm. I just was unaware. So I would I would shake myself. Wake up, man. See what's really true. Define what you really want and learn the shit you need to learn in order to build the life that you want. So there was a ton of things that I that I. I don't regret, but it's like, man, I wish I would have known that at this time. Like just even finance, finances and money and wealth building. Like yeah. how was I in the NFL? There was no reason why I should have been broke after that. No reason in the world. But I didn't leverage that opportunity because I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have the awareness. So I would wake myself up. And that would be the basic message is wake up. Look at, look at reality, man. Like wake up, dude, and do what you got to do. Yeah. And the last question I got for you kind of along the same lines, knowing what you know right now, do you think you could uh, make a comeback? I don't know if anyone's ever, <laughs> if anyone's ever asked you that question. That's hilarious. Man, that, that, that is funny. I haven't heard that question in a long time. Number one, obviously my pride tells me that I would be able to, if I'm honest with myself. I don't watch a ton of football. Well, I just bought the Madden game for my sons who we've been playing, and I'm like, I have no desire to put my body through that, man. <laughs> and quite frankly, I do not know if my body would hold up. <laughs> like, I just look back at and remember some of the times. I mean, even at my body right now, it's like I feel pretty good. But it's like I wake up a lot of days pretty sore, you know what I mean? And just uh, having to get warmed up. So I don't have any desire for that. I think that I maybe could. I don't know that a team would want to risk that on me, honestly. But if you put me, if you gave me a helmet and some pads, I feel pretty good about my <laughs> my chances. <laughs> right on, man. Man, like I said, I, I wish we had some more time here. I know both of us have a lot going on right now, so we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up here. But before we go, how can people find out more about you? How can they get a hold of you? And you know, what do you have coming up here in the future? Absolutely, man. I'm not you.com is my home base. That's where you can find me. My podcast, I put a lot of effort. I release a lot on my podcast. It's a podcast that I believe every man, especially a man compla- uh, or aiming to be some sort of high performer, 
and someone who is a lion in the jungle, as I call it, needs to listen to, of course, athletes as well. I give a ton, a ton of content out free. And like I said, I put a lot of energy into it. And it's based around the problems and challenges that that come up for a lot of people. So the, it's called the Sports Motivation Podcast. You can go to I'mNotYou.com forward slash SMP to check that out or just search Nii Shobo on iTunes. You'll see I also have another podcast called Get Your Mind Right. It's short four to five minute clips where I just spaz out over hip hop beats <laughs> and just give you some real reality checks, if you will. You know, uh, I wouldn't compare it to your typical motivation and shit like that. It's really reality based. Yeah. Um, not a lot of fluff. Not a lot of hype. It's, it's just shit that you, you really need to hear. And that you can check that out as well. And then, of course, I'm not you.com forward slash killer instinct. If you want to be a part of my coaching program, I take people through a 16 week process designed to teach them the habits, the mindset and the systems that they need to dominate under pressure. And you can check me out there as well. All righty, man. Well, I'll definitely uh, link everything up in the show notes. Uh, you got any last words uh, that you want to share with us? Anything we might not have covered before we wrap it up? <laughs> No, nah, man, in general, I would just say, man, if you're listening to this, I don't care who you are, how successful you think you are. You have a lot to improve. You have a lot more you can get from yourself. You have a lot of people who are depending on you and you are dramatically underperforming in a lot of areas and you need someone to tell you that. So I'll be the first one. And that news <laughs> should not sober you. It should not make you upset. It should actually excite you because what I just said to you is exactly what I tell myself every single day every single day. And I live in a constant state of pressure, a constant state of a certain brand of anxiety. And it's not the bad kind. It's the good kind. Mm -hmm. It's the kind that drives me. And it's why I'm awake every day. It's why I'm excited. It's why I wake up early. It's why I go to sleep late. That's why I play with my kids. That's why I do all the right things yeah. with my wife. You know what I'm saying? And it's, <laughs> and it's why, why my life is fun, quite frankly. I, I enjoy life. And I feel like anyone could do that, you know, and anyone could live like that, no matter where they're at. You don't even have to be at the level that you want to be. But that's the last message I would give people. All righty, man. Well, thanks again for everything. And man, I'm super appreciative of your time. And, you know, look forward to staying in touch, man. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to the Zero Excuses podcast. Join the conversation at KenyanZitzka.com in our Facebook group. And don't forget to rate and subscribe to our show. We'll talk to you next week. And always remember, results, not excuses.